Time for the sixth election in Australian history. Last time, Joseph Cook won government by just one seat. So what did he do? Well, pretty much nothing. See, Labor still had control of the Senate. As a result, every bill Cook tried to pass through government was immediately blocked by the Labor majority there. It was becoming very clear to Cook that a new parliament was needed to govern the country effectively, and only 11 months into his government, he triggered the first double dissolution election in Australian history, which sees the entire Senate disbanded as opposed to only half. Thus, the election was set for September the 5th, 1914, only 15 months since the last election. This election became very interesting in the lead up, as on the 30th of July, Cook received a telegram from the British government informing him they were considering a declaration of war on the German Empire, and Australia should take an appropriate defensive precautions. This was due to the presence of several German holdings in the Pacific, most notably German New Guinea, which shared a border with Australian New Guinea, now called the Territory of Papua. Cook, during an election meeting, was quoted as saying, Remember, when the Empire is at war, so is Australia at war. On the 3rd of August, he called an emergency cabinet meeting, however, only four of his members attended, as this was the middle of the election and most were out campaigning. During this meeting, an expeditionary force was planned out to assist the British anywhere in the world they needed it. Along with this, the Royal Australian's Navy's control was to be offered over to the British Admiralty if they so desired. This offer was sent to the British a mere 40 hours before they declared war, and some say this offered intensified pressure on the British government to do so. On August the 6th, the British government accepted the offer, and Cook would then authorise the creation of the Australian Imperial Force and the Australian Naval Military Expeditionary Force. Thirteen days later, on August the 19th, Colonel William Holmes would lead a task force to seize the German radio base at Rubau in the Bismarck Archipelago, and by the 14th of September had pretty much effective control of the entirety of German New Guinea and the surrounding islands. Suffice to say, Cook got more done in the lead up to the election than any other time in his government. Despite the relatively successful operation, Cook was not seeing improving popularity in his leadership, and that was partially due to his opposition. Despite the loss of the Prime Minister job, Andrew Fisher remained leader of the Labour Party and wanted the top job back. The Great War offered a big political prize to Fisher, as it was he who oversaw the development of an independent Australian Defence Force, which Cook had previously opposed. And the winner was... Andrew Fisher and the Labour Party, with 42 seats, gaining 5 seats to become Prime Minister for the third time. He, along with Alfred Deakin, would be the only two Prime Ministers in Australian history to achieve this. Cook would be pushed back into opposition, with only 32 seats, a loss of 6, which also saw an independent win a single seat in Victoria. Cook's Commonwealth Liberal government would end up being the shortest elected government in Australian history, only beaten by the switching governments of the first decade. Fun fact! Cook's government would be the only non-Labour government in Australia's history up until 2007 to last a shorter period of time than the Labour government it succeeded. Re-elected, Fisher would now have to lead Australia into its first major trial in its short history, the First World War. Come back next time for the election of 1917.